Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now a while ago we looked at a laptop from Chewy and found that the modern entry level specs were surprisingly capable. Today Chewy have sent over another of their products, this time it's the latest Core Box. I'm always interested to see what little systems like this can do and while I'm used to seeing an AMD processor in most mini machines, this one has a 12 core 13th Gen i5. Accompanying the processor we have a single 16GB stick of DDR5 running in dual channel mode and clocked at 5200MHz. There is a second available slot as well but we'll be using it as is and seeing how we get on. Storage wise we have a 512GB NVMe SSD which comes pre-installed with Windows 11. Now I quite like the way this system looks design wise, it reminds me a bit of those retro Apple Mac desktops, like the G4, the one with the handles on the top. We have plenty of ports here including two HDMI and two DisplayPort allowing for quad 4K 60Hz output. There's also six USB 3, a USB-C port, headphone jack and a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. The core box has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well of course. Now the side panels are easily removable for access to the storage one side and RAM the other. So adding more RAM or swapping out the storage is pretty easy and it's nice to see that the components in here have quite a lot of breathing room. They could have probably gone smaller with the enclosure for sure but that may have had a negative impact on the heat dissipation. Before I go further, let's talk price. At the time of this video, it's at just under 400 quid with a limited time discount code that knocks a bit more off. Depending on when you're watching, that may no longer be the case. The price seems pretty competitive as far as mini machines go, but I'd say this one is geared more toward those who are more concerned with processing power as opposed to graphics performance. That said, onboard Intel graphics have certainly come a long way in recent years. Now the first thing I did was run a Cinebench R23 benchmark and this really highlights the performance of the 13500H. With 4 performance cores, 8 efficient cores and 16 threads, this thing scored over 13,000 points in the multi-test and 1800 points in the single test. For some context, my trusty mid-range i5-12400F desktop CPU scores just over 12,000 points in the all-core run. The 13500H certainly feels snappy to use, there's no denying that, but we have to test gaming. This probably isn't where the focus lies with the core box, but with AMD graphics seemingly dominating the mini PC market, I just had to see what these Intel integrated graphics could do. We'll be able to get an idea of running temperatures and noise here too. The graphics found inside this thing seem to clock up to 1450 MHz, and the processor appears to be reaching its intended all-core boost clock when necessary, though this may not always be the case as the graphics are certainly the limiting factor, and the i5 doesn't always need to work that hard. We're seeing around 60 to 70 degrees most of the time, so nothing is throttling, and power consumption is also pretty impressive in my opinion. Somehow Cyberpunk 2077 ran on this hardware, we had to use the most aggressive FSR preset for sure, but I did start with Intel XESS, but we saw slightly less than 30 FPS with that enabled. Here, the average was 37. The percentile lows do suffer a bit, and perhaps I'll add another stick of RAM at some point, but this was certainly better than I was initially anticipating. Fortnite is definitely the sort of game best suited to the 13500H and iGPU. Performance mode at 1080p with full 3D res meant well over 60 FPS with a few dips and drops. Minecraft Java did even better with over 100 frames per second along with respectable percentile lows at the default fancy graphics preset. Team Fortress 2 still sits at a pretty high position on the Steam most played list and it's easy to see why because not only is this a fun game to play but it runs incredibly well on a wide range of hardware including the iGPU found inside our machine here. Mafia 2 is one of my favourite games and I remember having some serious difficulty running it back in the day with my integrated graphics. Not here though, low settings in this game don't look too much different from high so I stuck with the minimum options, albeit at 1920x1080 for a 60fps average. I wasn't expecting much more than 30fps in GTA 5 with 1080p but with FXAA, the normal settings and the detail sliders turned up halfway, the core box managed 50 with pretty consistent performance during my 20 minute gameplay session. The legendary Skyrim is up next, although this is the newest special edition of the game which is a little more intensive to run. 
53 was the average and the percentile numbers hovered around 30. I did try high settings at first which still meant we could hit 30 fps but those frame times were far less consistent. Finally then we have the ever popular Counter Strike 2. This is always my go to choice for any hardware benchmark given that it is still Steam's most played game by far. This isn't as low end hardware friendly as its predecessor but we were still able to get at least 60 fps with the low settings. It was also a pretty consistent experience as well judging by the 1 and 0.1% numbers. Now for a quick word on noise, when we're not doing much, maybe a little bit of web browsing and so on, it's really quiet, whisper quiet in fact. The fans do ramp up a bit when gaming, but it's still well within what I'd like to call respectable levels. The fan noise is going to change depending on the CPU, GPU temperature, and so that depends on what you're doing in games of course. But there we go, my first time testing a Chewy desktop PC. They saw my laptop review, decided to send me this, and I thought, yeah, we'll check it out. I always like to make time for these mini machines. I think they're absolutely fascinating, and I think it'll be interesting to see how the specs inside systems like this progress through the years. I'll leave a link to the product page down below if you want to check it out, of course. Thanks to Chewy for sending this over, and thanks to you, of course, for watching. Hopefully, I'll see all of you next time.